This morning, uh, in, in preparing for the message, it's always a challenge, but when it does hit you, it hits you pretty strong. And so that's the way I'm feeling this morning, because it's really about the Holy Spirit desiring to manifest His presence, which is a very special thing, but uh, specifically in such a way that we're given the opportunity to, with our senses to see, feel, hear, almost taste, if you will, uh, what it means and comprehend what it means to seek the face of God. Uh, because we're finding out pretty good. And you find as you grow in, in Christ and as you grow just biologically, you find out that God doesn't necessarily look like the picture we painted of him. Amen. You know, and that's a hard reality sometimes. But we have. A lot of us have. Uh, and we're taught to paint a certain picture of God. But we want to learn, hopefully this morning, start on that adventure, that journey where we actually seek the face of God. Psalm 105, verses 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known the doings among the people. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Meditate on and talk of all his marvelous deeds and devoutly praise them. Glory in his holy name and let the hearts of those who rejoice, who seek and require the Lord as their indispensable necessity. I just love the amplified version. <laughs> seek, inquire of and for the Lord and crave him and his strength, his might and his inflexibility to temptation. Seek and require his face and his presence continually evermore. Oh, yeah. Psalm 27, 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Praise God, huh? Mm -hmm. To seek the face of God literally defines out as trying to find and obtain. It, it defines out as searching for and discovering, asking, and then, and then tangibly perceiving with all of our senses, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, those senses, so there's a plethora, but with all of our senses perceiving his face, who he is, as I say, face to face, you know, man to man, woman to man, woman to woman, face to face. This is the appearance of the great I am as conveyed by his countenance. And what an amazing, just to, just to think of that is amazing beyond uh, vocabulary, I think. To seek the face of God is, is to inquire of him and, and require of him out of a sense of an overwhelming need to know him as a friend. And that's, that's different territory. When you talk about God, Abraham knew God as a friend. And we sometimes, uh, for a whole lot of reasons, we sometimes avoid that. Because intimacy with God is a different experience. And friendship with God is a different experience than just uh, treating God as some... Well, as remember, we've talked about that as the old Bette Midler song, God is watching us from a distance. No, don't think so. He's right here. And so knowing him as a friend, that's what seeking his face means. Reading a book about a person is not the same thing as knowing the person who wrote the book. It's just not the same thing. And so that's what seeking the face of God is all about. It's actually and realistically about coming to know the person who wrote the book. Yes, he used human beings to pen, but he worked through them. God uh, is the author of the book. So we're talking about getting to know the person who literally wrote the book in deeper and more intimate ways than you ever thought possible. And really, just being born again is a deeper and intimate <laughs> experience than you ever thought possible. Before you knew Jesus Christ as Savior, did you think that was ever possible? I mean, really, literally? My sins uh, are all forgiven, and not just forgetting, forgiven, my sins are all forgotten? That's not what we do. You better believe it. I'm bringing that up. You know, we remember everything, and we bring it up. God doesn't do that. 
He forgives and forgives. So we didn't even think that was possible, but here we are. And the, the reality of, of seeking the face of God is it's about sanctification. This is not a word we use outside of our Christian circles much. I'm going to say several words we don't use much outside uh, of the family. Uh, and if you don't know what these words mean, Google it. Because there are general definitions that apply uh, that you can look up. There are some theological differences in when you practically apply these words. But if you look them up, for instance, sanctification, look that up. But sanctification, and that's what this is about, about becoming consecrated and holy. Don't freak out when I say holy. And we get these images in our mind of what holy is. Smoke and mirrors and floating across the room and... Uh, no, holy is being set apart. That's what consecrated means. You're being set apart to God to be his friend. That's what being holy is. So don't get it. There again, it's about painting the wrong picture. Okay, this is what takes place as we sincerely seek the face of God. And have you ever been in the, in the face of someone you love? Isn't that a special thing? Uh, you know, Lemon, for instance, you know. Your little grandbaby, you know, you're in, when you're in there, the, there's something happens to you. You get mesmerized. Well, when you seek the face of God, that same experience happens. You get mesmerized. You're in the face of God. And this process, this process called sanctification of seeking the face of God is going to, and it very well should, continue until the day we meet him in the air. It's ne you're never there. You know, it's a, it's a journey. It's a constant growth, a constant opportunity for growth. But you're never there uh, and will never be fully there until it's time to leave this body behind and enter into the fullness of his glory, which, wow, wow. That's shouting time, huh? Almost shouting time here. Since regeneration, and here's another word you need to look up, since regeneration has to do with our nature and justification has to do with our standing and our adoption has to do with our position, then when we look at sanctification, it has to do with our character and our conduct who we are and how we behave. In justification, we are declared righteous. We are now declared righteous in order that through sanctification now, we become righteous. And there's a thought. And we know it's not our righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ in us. We know that. But we, we become that. Uh, it's a shame it's not instant. You know, ding, go out and play. You're all good. But, it, you know... Uh, but it's a process. Justification is what God does for us, and sanctification is what God does in us as we seek his face. You got that? That's what God does in us as we seek his face. Justification puts us into a right relationship with God while sanctification exhibits all the fruit of that relationship. That's when you start seeing the fruit of the Spirit you've read about in Galatians, you know, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, self-control, all those good things. That's the fruit, and you start seeing that in sanctification. That fruit uh, is a life which is continually separating us from the way we used to be from the way we used to live. We call that sin, and we call the way we used to live a world of sin, that, that atmosphere, those events that we participated in, those things that we did. And sanctification continually separates us from the way we used to be. Uh, and it sets us apart to become God's friend. I hope this is making sense. But that's what happens. It's an amazing process. And the great thing is this is a stacked deck. We win before we even start. The price has already been paid. We've been declared. See, if we were just conquerors, that would be a great thing. If we were just winners, that's awesome. But God says we are more than conquerors. We are more than winners. Why? Because we won before we even got in the game. It'd be like going to the tournament. Well, I'm going to play, but I've already got the championship. And we have. That's the great thing about it. God does not, and, and I can simply put this in a whole lot of ways, but one way to put it is God does not want us to do more for him. He wants us to be more with him. Why? Well, I think, I, yeah, I did put it up there. There it is right there. Because by doing more with him, he does more with us in us and through us than we could ever do for him. 
That's when I say it's a stacked deck. By being more with him, by striving to be closer to him, he accomplishes more through us than we could ever accomplish for him. So stop beating your head against the wall and just get closer to him and he'll take care of the rest. Be, and, and what you find out by doing that, and this is where the challenge comes in and some, uh, wow, stupendous irony, being more with him actually requires a greater concentrated focus of our efforts in a direction we normally don't want to go. And that's why it's such a battle every day because we don't want to go that way. Now we say we do, oh praise God, hallelujah, uh, yes Lord, yes Lord, we say we do. But when it comes down to it, you know, Monday through, through uh, uh, Saturday, when it comes down to it, our flesh doesn't want to go that way. It just doesn't want to do that. Uh, the abundance of his power working in our lives can only be developed, it can only be manifested as we develop an ongoing, vitally close connection to God through Jesus Christ on a daily basis. And the secret, and there is a secret, and God always reveals the secrets of his kingdom, but the secret to continuously rewarding relationship with him is this. And I really do, I hold to this every day, and this is the secret. It is always our move. Always. God's already made his move. He came to us in the flesh. He already did everything he needed to do. He made his move to us. And we're constantly, God, you need to do this. God, you need to do that. I, I don't think so. It's our move. It's our move. He came to Calvary. He paid the ultimate price to connect with us. Now it's our turn. We are supposed to move. We're supposed to do something about it now. And, of course, acceptance is the first thing, faith by faith. But it's always our move. Closeness to God is our move. He's as close to us as he's ever going to get until we say yes. Until we submit and let go of all the stuff that we insist on hanging on to. It's always our responsibility to act, to, to initiate the movement towards God. He's already initiated everything he needs to do towards us. It's our obligation in this relationship to seek the face of God. And, and once you do it, it doesn't feel like an obligation. It doesn't even feel like a responsibility. It's a pleasure. It's a joy. It's a peace and a contentment that you will not find outside of it, of that, of seeking his face. You just won't find it. And uh, the, Unless our actions toward unrestricted closeness with the Lord do not become our first priority, our most urgent actions, then we'll never fulfill our destiny within his plan. Never. We'll just completely struggle. We'll keep repeating the same old behavioral patterns we've always repeated. We'll keep struggling with the same old sin, the same old situations, the same old mess. Till we stop and just, just not worry, but, but concern ourselves with getting close with him. And that's the key. Our flesh, as I said earlier, our flesh, our nature in and of itself does not want to go there. But it is the only place we can go if we expect to genuinely experience what Jesus said in John 15, 15. And this is what he said. I do not call you servants. I don't call you slaves any longer. For the servant does not know what his master is doing, what he's working out. But I have called you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. I have revealed to you everything that I have learned. And that's last word we're supposed to be from him I said from high because <laughs> I was with my granddaughter and that's what she keeps saying hi 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 and so subconsciously I typed out hi so it's supposed to be him okay <laughs> I've revealed to you everything that I've learned from him there's once a there's a story that comes to mind there's once a man that uh, went in search of God uh, you know earnestly was seeking God. So he found who he considered to be a wise man and asked him, you know, I want to, how can I find God? I want to find God. So the wise man told him to go down the Ohio River, wait out about five feet, and, and he'll meet him out there. Well, that's what he did. Of course, you know, I wouldn't advise anybody to get in the Ohio River, but it's a story. So he waited out five feet, and the, the wise man came out, and, and he said, okay, here we go. He pushed the guy down and held him underwater. And, you know, held him underwater about a minute or so, you know. 
The guy was struggling and fighting with all his might, and finally the wise man let him up out of the water. He comes flying up out of the water. <gasps> Why did you do that? And the guy said, the moment when you, you get to the place in your life that you want God as bad as you wanted air just now, that's when you'll find him. That's when you'll find him. And there's scriptural evidence for that. That, that, that's when you find it. We have become, we've lost that. We've lost that holding our breath in our lives. We've lost that desire. We have become experts at serving God. We've become experts. We have almost perfected the art of doing time for the Lord. We've teased about this before. You know, you, you punch in and you punch out. You know, well, I went to church. Click, click. Bam. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I read my Bible for three minutes this morning. Click, click. I punched in, punched out. Oh, I gave that homeless guy a quarter. I feel so good about my fail. You know, we, 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 we perfected this, you know. We've been made into sanctuaries of formality instead of his divine presence. And when you become close to somebody, have you ever, that, that's when their presence uh, becomes viable. Have you ever noticed uh, people who've been married for a long time, they start looking like and acting like each other? I mean, you see it all the time. They just do. It's like, wow. It's just, they, they, you know they're married because it's like they even finish each other's sentences, you know. And, you know, they share their false teeth. They don't do that. But, but, but it's intimate is the point. Very intimate. And that's the way it is in our relationship with God. We don't know it, but all of a sudden, I'm acting like my daddy. You know, I'm acting like my dad, don't even know it. But it's because I've spent so much time in intimacy, getting to know him. Uh, he already knows me. But, but sanctuaries of his divine presence is what, right in the middle of all our learned behavioral patterns, right in the middle, we have remained novices at being God's friend. And, and that, that has to change if we expect to move further in our walk with God. Holiness is purity of the heart, purity of our nature, not an outward system of legalism. It's just not. It never has been. As our faith comprehends the power and willingness of God himself to sanctify us, to make us holy, to set us apart, and then we truly allow this to happen by letting go of all the, the luggage, the baggage, we wholeheartedly stop trying to act Christian, stop trying to act holy, and all of a sudden you just are. You just are. I hope you absorb this. I hope this is real to you. This is about longing. This is about pure desire. This is about passion. Passion beyond what we've experienced before, about thirsting for, waiting for, seeing, knowing, loving, seeking, and responding to a person, not a religion, a person, intimacy. And remember, we had a message on that. Intimacy is actually three words, into me see. Intimacy. This is about that type of longing. Psalm 42.1, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, becoming born again from above, is the impartation of life itself. Becoming holy, then, is a daily submissive experience of crucifixion, of taking up your cross, as Jesus put it, taking up your cross and following Jesus. It is death to self. It is seeking the face of God. That's not death to your temperament, death to who you are, Lisa, Jerry, Mike, Bob. It's not death to that. It's death to your sinful self. self it's death to selfishness. And we don't want to do that. Why? Because we're protecting ourselves. <laughs> I mean, it's so ironic how this works. It is death to self and seeking the face of God. As we seek Jesus, he begins to reveal himself to us as he actually is. 
and not as somebody told us he was or, or whom we may think he is or, or, we, or whom, you know, grandma or grandpa told us he was. John 14, 21 and many other scriptures uh, teach us this. As we experience more of the living God and encounter his presence, his face, it is an all, A-W-E, all filled experience that our flesh does not necessarily want to go does not want to experience. Because seeking and finding the face of God takes us from our territory into his, and that's where we get out of our comfort zone. When you go into God's territory, there's a demand for complete and total honesty. Complete and total. No reasons, no excuses, no, you know, Charlie Brown's parents, wah, 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 wah. None of that. None of that. It's complete and total honesty honesty when you get into God's territory. This is a place that demands the conquering of sin, not not rationally excusing it uh, through our own logic. It's the conquering of it. This is a place that's the conquering of condemnation and spiritual immaturity. This is a place where there are no hidden secrets and no hidden agendas. <laughs> There's so many things that are going, I can't share any of them. Doggone it. <laughs> <laughs> just zip, zip, we want another one. When we see him as he is, when we see him as he is, we also see ourselves as we are, and there's no more hiding. And that's why we don't want to go there. There's no more hiding, no more pretending. So don't be surprised as your carnal nature wrestles with you every day as you seek the face of God, because that's what's going to happen. It's, it's, a, it's a fight. It's a battle. That's why I like to wear boots, because I'm in a battle. Please hear this, though, and I want to, you know, throw in a caveat. However, hear this. When you see God as he is, of course, it's just a glimpse at a time, because we learn scripturally. We can't see him totally. We wouldn't make it through that. When we see him as he is, a glimpse at a time, you will gladly and willingly Without limitation, give your all because you will be bathed in his forgiveness and unconditional love through grace when you see him as he is. Remember, we painted the wrong picture. He's not waiting for you you to fall so he can kick you. He's got his hand reached out so he can pick you up when you fall. That's his picture. That's, con- that's when you experience holiness being set apart. That's God. Hebrews 4, 13 and 16. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us, sinners, that's us, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Some might say amen to that. Just when we need it. That's God, isn't it? Because we all, you know, the right time is his time. He is so much greater than our limited knowledge of him. So much greater. And as we continue to experience the manifestation, the tangible manifestation of his presence, and our knowledge shows itself to be consistently insufficient in the shadow uh, of his magnificence and wonder, then we become more like him. It's an amazing thing, and, and I, I'm, without exaggeration, I can say I, I see this almost every day. I see God working, and I know you do too if you'd stop and think about it. You see him working every day, and what a magnificent way to live. <laughs> it's magnificent. A long time ago, there was a man named Augustine. Some people, have, I've heard him refer to him as Augustine. I don't know. It's kind of like Frankenstein, Frankenstein, I guess, but... But I always called him Augustine. So, uh, but he's considered by many to be a great, great man of God. 
great man of God. His writings laid the foundation of Christian thought for thousands of years to come. Well, over a thousand at least. You know, and, but, and to say that his writings for, were, are and were influential is an understatement. But anyway, at the end of his life, Augustine, he laid on his deathbed surrounded by his family and, and intimate friends. His breathing stopped. His heart failed. And, and the report writes that there was this great sense of peace that filled the room as he went to be with his Lord. And suddenly, just a few moments later, uh, he opened his eyes, uh, and this is the way it's written. He opened his eyes, and his face became flushed with light, and he said, I have seen the Lord, and all I have written is but straw. Wow. Everything we think we know becomes just like that, becomes nothing but straw when we actually take... Take the purpose and the time to seek and find the face of God. It's all straw compared to God. If God is not in whatever it is we're doing, doesn't matter what it is. If he's not in it, then it's destined for eternal failure. If Jesus is not in our worship services, then we're nothing more than a social club. We've talked about that. Let's just open up a moose lodge and get a jukebox and be done with it. If Jesus is not with us, if, if we're, the, we're two or more gathered in my name, he promises to be with us. If we're not going to move in the anointing of the Holy Spirit and follow his leading in whatever it is we do, we might as well close the doors. Might as well. If we cannot give the hurting people that we're surrounded by that we meet every day, no matter where it is we meet them, if we can't give them something uh, substantial, something to help them, and also the hurting people in the body of Christ, if we can't offer something real from the throne of God itself, then we have nothing more to offer than some good music and maybe a little bit of spoken word and hollow words at that. No book, no teacher, no uh, organization, no individual, no method of doing anything can discover for us what God's love commands we find for ourselves personally, one-on-one, -on -one, Face to face. We're all dead. Uh, and I'm, I guess I, uh, yes, I need to say this because we are all debtors to this knowledge now. We're all debtors uh, until, uh, to this truth until we find him. Face to face, the result of our search is written so concisely in Jeremiah 29, 13. This is what the Lord God declares. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Wow. In this place we gather that's called Hope Light Community Church and among the group of believers, the corporate that calls itself the body of Christ, I don't think there can ever be any greater endeavor. There can never be any more excellent calls than that. Uh, more, a more beneficial purpose to us and to all those that we're surrounded by in our daily living than to seek the face of God. Jesus even promised that. Everything else will be taken care of if we do that. So open your hearts to that. Open your minds. Open your hearts to the work of the Holy Spirit in your daily life. Every second of every day. He is always there. In fact, he's here right now ready to change us if we'll allow. If we'll take the steps to seek his face. Musicians, if you'll come back. The great thing about God, he's always calling. That's why I say it's our, it's our turn to act. He's calling us right now as a group of people, individually and corporately as a body. He's calling us. Jesus, Christian, non-Christian, he's calling all of us right now to seek him. So I'm just asking you, why don't you answer that? Why don't you answer? Answer him. Take the time in your life. The word of God has been spoken here this morning, so it really is up to you. Jesus is calling you. Why don't you answer him? Seek the face of God. Amen. Amen.